only I could make up something like that, I guess. Uh, anyway, how y'all all? Welcome to the Graffon Show. It is Friday, Open Forum Friday, and uh, there's good news out there for all to be had. i tell y'all what, I'll be glad. I'll be glad when it's all over. Just, I just got to tell you. Four days, Moon, yeah. four days. Well, the good thing about it is after the night, we'd be so entrenched for 24 hours in the LSU Alabama and college football, it won't matter at that point. It just, to me, it won't matter because once I head to uh, Tiger Stadium, I'm going for fun and mayhem. <laughs> I can't, you I know, can't believe Kathy amazing. gave you those tickets. You know, what you say? She gave me. She <laughs> double. She gave them to me the first time. Did I tell you how I got them back? No. She was taking them away because of the argument we had. Yeah. So, so it cost me face value now. <laughs> <laughs> She hey. said she said she had closer friends she could have gave the tickets to. Hey. So I'm just telling you. A what lot I heard. of people would have still taken that deal with a big smile yeah, on their I, face. I got two tickets. Uh huh. Can I hear two hundred? Can I hear two 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 fifty? Two hundred. Get three hundred. Get three. I can do a little auctioneering right now, Brad. We make a sale for the tickets. Yeah. I wonder who who would offer me money for my tickets. Moon, I think you get. I think if you were serious, <laughs> I think you get some high dollar offers. I'm just saying. Well, Brandon, even if I'm not serious, you ever heard of? Uh, I hope nobody offers me a price I won't refuse. You know, everybody has a price, Brandon. Yeah. I just, mine's really high. That's, that's, I'll just leave it at that. All right, 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. A lot of stuff to get into. It is open forum Friday a day. You can talk about what you want to. Maybe you got a favorite person uh, in an election you want to talk about. That's all cool today. And uh, there's unbelievable numbers coming out on a job, but if my computer don't come up, I can't share them with you. It's just phenomenal numbers coming up. Trump, 51% approval. Now I see why Donald Trump's the one out there making it happen uh, for the Republican Party. And uh, if he falls short, he falls short. But nobody can say he didn't give it his all. It's it's phenomenal. And the Democrats are already measuring the curtains. Now they're predicting up to 40 seats and things of that nature. And I just don't believe anybody has a clue. Every state is different. You can't look at one state and think it's happening in the next state because that may not even be close what's happening in the next state at all. I'm just telling you, national, there's no such thing as a national election. We all vote on the same day, but it really gets down to the state. Let me tell you what just broke. Used to, I don't know you people, and it said Brandon's a lot younger than me. Man, you're younger than me about 25 years. Yep. So uh, you, you won't understand what I'm talking about, but you may, because you, you do news and you cover a lot of stuff, so you, you, you're up to date a lot more than I'll understand what you're there. talking about. Well, what happens is, used to when you vote, it was always about the economy. Everything else didn't matter. With social media and the way campaigns are run so nasty and so tough now, it becomes something else. But if it was just about the economy, we got a record 156,000, I'm sorry, 156 million, 562,000 employed record. Remember, that was all going down on Barack Obama because everybody was going to, uh, everybody was going either disability, the jobs weren't there, Obama, well, that was a joke. Things have gotten so bad when Obama came along, they had to go up some, but he never created this. October jobs added 250,000 jobs. You're going to vote for a leftist Obama Democrat? Manufacturing, which Obama said, what's Trump to do? Just wave a magic wand, make them all come back? Well, 32,000 new manufacturing jobs in the month of October by itself. Over 500 thousand new manufacturing jobs and that's who you have to be as a country to be great okay hispanic unemployment all-time low why would hispanics vote for nancy pelosi and chucky schumer wage gains stronger strongest in a decade which would cover every year of barack and saint obama and poll numbers for trump approval number 51 percent and and just think about all this took place with the media beating up Trump 95% of the time, and they praise Barack Hussein Obama 95% of the time. Just think if you had a media in this country who loved this country. They didn't care about parties. They didn't care about ideology. They cared about the country and the Constitution, what this would look like right now. But that's not what they care about. And we, we say, we've been seeing this for so long. We used to call CNN the Clinton News Network or the Communist News Network. Trump comes along and all they do is beat him. Then when they did a poll the other day, who's dividing the country so much? The media was the number one divide when they took the poll by the people. They thought the media was way more divisive. 
than what Donald Trump is. And take out Trump's tweets, Brandon. I believe uh, they wouldn't even find him to be that divisive. Donald Trump's done nothing to hurt a black person. Not one thing to hurt a black person. Not one. But yet, watch CNN and, and MSNBC, racism. Ra- Yesterday, and Brandon, I said this during Obama, and I'll say it again, we've in- reinvented racism in this country. It's like, let's reinvent it. Let's revitalize it. Because that's all we care about is racism, because we can't win elections telling people the truth and what we really want to do. So every white or black person that can get on these TV stations, they put them on and all they talk about racism, national, white nationalism, and all this stuff, which I'm telling you right now is the biggest bunch of bunk I've ever heard in my life. I mean, call the racist through the email, through my Facebook, and I tell people all the time, if you can prove I'm a racist, if you can prove I'm race, I'll quit doing what I'm doing, but they never prove it. Saying the N-word, anybody out there says the N-word does not make you a racist either. You shouldn't use the word, but it doesn't make you a racist. But, yeah, we that's what we, we, we get to. And so watching as the election is closing in, why are the Democrats running back to racism? They're doing it in Florida with Gilliam. They do it in Georgia. Oprah Winfrey came in, Brandon, a lady that's probably worth over a billion dollars, crying about racism in our country. I guarantee you Oprah's a billionaire, a lot more because of white than black. A billionaire is racism. See, because they, they have no moral code. They kick Christ out. These people kick God out. They kick everything that means something out so they have no moral code. Say what you want to say. Look at what these people did to Kavanaugh, to Brett Kavanaugh. By the way, Brandon, they're showing right now Facebook blocked two pro-life GOP campaign ads were blocked by Facebook. Facebook loves the left. It's phenomenal. Watching all this stuff as we continually go through this. Why do they want to block somebody running pro-life ads when killing babies, 61 million by the Democrats, is part of it? I saw the advertisement, too. Okay? So they, they run ads, and Facebook blocks them. And they're talking about these people being for partial birth abortion. Barack Obama believed uh, abortion was good no matter when it was, right before the baby came out. He was deemed great. So anyway, record numbers of unemployed. Jobs, another 250,000. 32,000 manufacturing that the chief and liar of Barack Obama said, they ain't coming back, they ain't coming back. You just make minimum wage, let us pay for your health care, and we good. And vote for us, by the way. Wage gain strong as in a decade, and they just can't handle it, folks. I hope and pray this is the thing to get us over the top. I mean, the lies from the left. And just think if they didn't have the press, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, Washington Post, all that stuff. They didn't have them every day trying to run a Christian, a white man's life, a Republican's life every day, every day, every day, every day. Now, by the way, Brandon, I don't believe anything comes out the left's mouth. Pope told Michael Moore that capitalism is a sin. The problem is, Brandon, we didn't hear the Pope say that. That's Michael Moore saying that. Now, Michael Moore has made his money. Why, Brandon? Capitalism. (laughs) Because, you see, you can't, if you're in a country that is not capitalistic, chances are you're not going to be able to put out films that are against what your government runs on how it runs an economy so he's basically making money off of capitalism which allows him to do what he's doing so the remember the pope came from a socialist marxist country you got to remember also michael moore said it you have to remember also that michael moore is a leftist socialist marxist now because he made his money he made his money in our free society So it's 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 just phenomenal to continue to watch. All right, eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. Hickson has a hotline. Racism always rears its ugly head, and all it is is accusations with no proof. Anyway, you can go to drudgereport dot com if you want to watch. One hundred fifty six million five hundred sixty two employed is a record. October jobs two hundred fifty thousand. Manufacturing up thirty two thousand more jobs, and Barack Obama's ain't coming back. It's like he told me I was going to save 2500 a year on my health care and I could keep my doctor. 
Another lie. Hispanic unemployment. Why would Hispanics vote with Democrats? I don't understand that. Wage gains, strongest in the decade. These are phenomenal, phenomenal numbers that we're looking at right now. Yet, and yet, we're in a close race. You know, after what happened with Kavanaugh, the caravan, and all the stuff that's going on, you would think the real good people in this country would vote right. You just think they would just stand up and vote right. And I'm just wondering if this turns the tide. If it doesn't, and people want to go to a socialist Marxist country, voting Democrat, you've gone to the right place. Record, 156 million. I was told by somebody this has a minimum of 24 more months, Brandon. You ready to roll like this? Why would you vote for a Marxist? You're voting for Venezuela or to be the United States of America. When you vote Republican, you're voting for the United States of America. When you vote Democrat, you're voting to be like Venezuela and as fast as you can get there. Go read about what's happening in Venezuela's economy right now. Take a break. Hey, even Louisiana is getting better, folks. Not because of John Bell Edwards. We'll take a break. Be right back. Every economic number that could be up is up. Things that need to be down, like unemployment, still at 3.7%. December, it's the lowest since December of 1969. Brandon, you wouldn't even have thought. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. That was 15 I, years before. I don't mean that ugly, but you wouldn't even have thought. No. But yet, you got people going to vote the other way. Our average hourly earnings increased by $0.05 cents an hour for the month, $0.83 cent over year to year. We're representing 3.1 best gain. The best pay since 2009, which, by the way, was so low, then it had to go up. So anyway, 250,000 jobs. All right. By the way, I want to say hi to Maddie. You people didn't know. Miss Maddie Graffon had a tooth pulled today. So, But uh, guess what? She's a trooper. Already mm-hmm. headed back home for a little rest and re- relaxation, Brandon. And guess what, Brandon? She's uh. going to tell us what she wants to eat. You ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So anyway, this Maddie, you got to tell her hi, Brandon, because she's listening to She don't care what I say. She wants to hear from Brandon. Well, hey, Maddie, make sure you ask for something good tonight to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Just not expensive. <laughs> 844-766-6607. Hickson has that hotline. Yes, all these numbers. You got, let's see, the headline jobless numbers stayed level even uh, and at two-tenths of a percentage point rise in labor force participation rose to a 62.9%. Those counted outside the labor force tumbled by 487,000. These numbers, and Barack Obama's out there taking credit for <laughs> Hey, when you used to lying, why not keep lying? You know, geez. There's a lot of people that believe it. Oh, my God. I watched somebody the other night. It was a black gentleman. I'm saying gentleman. I'm sure he was. And it just everything's racism. Racism, race, Trump's racist, race, white. And as you know, he's sending out those co- code words. Remember, Brian, we had people call him. The dog you, whistles. You sent out code words, Mr. Griffon. So, dee, 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 dee. I bet you can't decide for that, can you? All right. Let's see. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. How many of you people believe Cook says Dem gains 30 to 40 seats? How many of you people believe that? How many of you really believe that the Dems are going to gain? I don't know. I told you I don't know. I don't. I don't have a clue. But they do. They all got clues on what's going to happen. Nancy Pelosi's already measuring the drapes and Maxine Waters. Payback is hell, she's saying. I'm just asking you. 30 to 40 seat win by the Democrats, and do you believe that? So let's go to Norman and Poche Bridge. How you doing, Norman? Well, I'm doing pretty good, Moon. Listen, you were talking about uh, record employment, yep. including among minorities, yep. not probably not being covered on CNN and MSNBC and all no, that. No, no, yep, no. They, 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 too, they too busy hollering that the president is a racist because that's all they did well, yesterday. That's well, it. well, that. That kind of leads into what I was going to mention. If it would have been mentioned, this is the headline. Trump makes blacks work harder. <laughs> well, all I can tell you is I don't know what the headlines are, but I know what they're not. They're always anti-Trump. All the time, 24-7 yep. Yep. on all of them. And if Trump said 
and the numbers are this good. Why are people want to send Nancy Pelosi and, and Maxine Waters back into it's, charge of anything? I wouldn't a, put them in charge of anything in my life. It's a mystery to me, Moon. Well, listen, I'm glad I got to talk to you, but I got to go to work. I'll try and listen a little bit later on. All right. Thanks for the call. 844-766-6607. Hickson has it hotline. By the way, Brandon, I think I told you off the air. Corey Booker, the nut nut from New Jersey. Spartacus. Spartacus. Spartacus! Uh, New Jersey's governor is signing that Cory Booker can run for United for President of the United States in two years and the United States Senate seat in New Jersey. He gets to run on both tickets, Brandon. I tell you, what, you think it's just a Looney Tune place? <laughs> My God. Why would you want him to be anything close to politics? But they're going to do it where uh, he can run for both. Once again, typical. I just don't, you know, if they do that in Louisiana, that doesn't make me mad. It really would. If somebody would want to run for two positions at one time, that way you can win one, maybe lose one, and still be in politics. Would, would, would this country and New Jersey be hurt if Spartacus was not in politics? Michael Moore claiming Pope told him that capitalism is a sin, yet he made all his money on capitalism, through capitalism. Right, the Pope. Now, I don't know if the Pope said that, but it wouldn't surprise me. He said a lot of other things that hadn't surprised me. Yet we got scandal through some of the churches and some of the stuff that's taking place. You know, and uh, he said that. He, he doesn't talk much about that. He said some things, but he don't talk much about it. But he's always willing to take a shot at the United States, whether it be the border or, any, you know, just it doesn't matter. Capitalism, he just, you know, he's going he gonna to talk bad about us. By the way, 844-766-6607, Hickson has a hotline. We will give away Cane Rope Pecan giveaway today. All you can do is email me, moon at moongraffon.com, moon at moongraffon.com, and make sure you leave an address so we can ship if you win. Let's go to Robin on the road. Robin, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Moon? Doing fine, sir. Wonderful, I guess. Yeah. Great. Um, didn't the Spartans eventually lose? <laughs> Hold your thought, did, didn't they? Hold your thought, Robert. I got to take the break. Hard break. You stay right there. We'll start where we'll we'll continue where you where, you, where with the comments you made and a lot of other. I got a couple questions for you too. So anyway, we take a break. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. We'll be right back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back, Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. Open line for you eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. Hickson has a hotline. Is it a big deal if the Democrats win the House? You know, Brandon, that's another thing we made a big deal. Because we've been told they're going to win it. Uh, it. Is that a big deal to the average person out there that's going, you know what, if they do, they do tonight. You know, if they don't control the Senate, they don't have the presidency. Yes, you will hear. And look, and, and I think it's not a, I, by the way, I don't want to ever lose to those people. Because what they, what they are is evil and it's hate. The Democratic Party has become such a hateful party. You know, blaming people for racism and just over and over again. And besides, if you're going to kill 61 million babies, you can say what you want to. You are a hate group. But the bottom line is, if they even if they win, does that mean, does that mean, boy, all of a sudden they get to do everything they want? And they don't. Now, the only consolation if they were to win the House is we get to see Maxine Waters and Nancy Pelosi talking. And when you get to see their mouths moving, they say a lot of dumb, ignorant, stupid things. I mean, it's just be one dumb, ignorant, stupid thing after another. And I think if they are on the TV for two years, that you talk about a wave, all right? It'd be a red wave like you've never seen in the House to get that much ignorance out of the leadership in the United States of America. I mean, these, these are not the brightest bulbs, and they don't have a clue, and everything is hate comes out of their mouths. It just does all the time. So... Uh, but I tell you what, I don't know what's going to happen. I know the economy, the numbers look good. Uh, all that stuff is awesome. But I don't know what people are thinking. Like I said, every one of these states have different, they're different entities in the United States of America. And every one of them have a different issue, or different issues in their state. You know, why would you vote for some of these people? I have no idea. You know, I, I see what they say. I saw what they did with Kavanaugh. I saw what they're doing with the caravan. I'm glad Trump's going to send 20,000 down. He needs to send 30, send them. And then, by the way, there's a lawsuit by people in the caravan 
against Trump in the United States of America not granting them their proper rights. Migrants traveling to the U.S. sue Trump and the government claim violation of constitutional rights. They want to use our own constitution against us. That's amazing. They want to actually use the constitution against us. And we got people in the Democrat Party who want to beat the hell out of the constitution. And they're going back and grabbing something. Fifth Amendment states, no person shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor be deprived of life, liberty, property within due process of law. The PBS report has cited former Supreme Court Justice Anthony Scalia in 93. It is a well-established that the Fifth Amendment entitles aliens to due process of law and deportation proceedings. Yes, it might, but it doesn't do them rights have rights to be in this country getting benefits. No rights at all. People that want to have open borders are just crazy. They don't understand anything, just like they don't understand what the Electoral College is about. They don't understand how important that is, that a majority of vote in each state. The, see, folks, with the globalists and what these uh, managers of everything want to do, they want Everybody, every state be the same. We're not the same here as we are in California. We're not exact. We're not like New York. We don't want to be like New York. Unfortunately, we're not like Texas. But I really don't want to be like Texas. I want to have our own entity, our own country, our, our own state, our own culture. Not our country, but our own state, our own culture. It's what makes everything unique. It's why we travel. I go, you go to Alaska. I had a chance to go to Alaska. And it's just a different culture. It's really unique. I like what they're doing different than us. Some of the things, of course, they do the same thing. That's what made the United States of America so unique. You know, and uh, it, it's just these illegals that are traveling, they're illegal once they come in our country. Somebody just made a comment. Uh, Trump said if they throw rocks, you know, that's like shooting a gun. It is. You ever got hit with a rock? I mean, people have been killed with rocks. So what are you going to do? Let them come over and throw rocks and do that? Man, you've got to back all them off. They have to know. And I think Donald Trump's done the right thing. The president has done the right thing by saying, you better not come. We're putting, and then they're going to sue. Claim violation of constitutional rights. They, nobody has a constitutional right to come in this country. Nobody. By the way, Brandon, I didn't look for it. Mark Levin had about a three to four minute piece on Hannity last night. He probably explained this, and he explained because they call it Trump a racist because he doesn't want people not white coming into the country. And he went through all the presidents that are not called racist who did way more than Trump ever thought to do. Not even close. And if you could find that, that was unbelievable. Levin was nailing it. And he was bringing up all these presidents that had to deal with illegals and the way they handled it. And then like, they were never called racist. They were never called Stalin. They were never called Hitler at all. And they had to deal with what more than what Trump had to deal with. Back in the World War, we got when we got hit by Japan, in World War II. Okay, and, and they had they rounded up a lot of Japanese people in this country, American people that were that just happened to be in that Japanese descent. We went through a, a, a part in our country we didn't let anybody come in here. They weren't called Stalin and Hitler and all that stuff like they do with Trump. Some of them were Democrats. Anyway, Levin nailed it, and he was right. You found it? Yeah, but we'll have to wait until after the top of the hour to play it. It's about six minutes. I know, but, I, but, but hold it, please. Don't let that go. When we get back... I want to play Levin. If you if you're sitting around and you want to hear this, you want you need other people to listen to this. He really destroyed the left when it came to immigration laws and what people did. And Trump is not doing anything yet on CNN, MSNBC, and other places to call him Stalin and Hitler. And that's what I mean—the rhetoric, the total rhetoric during the election. And they're never going to stop till people quit watching that crap. And advertisers quit advertising with them. That's when they'll stop. But as long as, you know, they're trying to win an election on CNN and MSNBC, I can promise you. They're doing everything they can to win an election for the left.
And that's a shame. But I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. By the way, I do want to mention my good friends at Stein, everything for your home and yard. They have a Black Friday, Brandon. Prices on appliances sale going on now until November 14th. And I mean deal over deal over deal with washers, dryers, refrigerators, microwaves, ovens. It is one of the best sales you can come across. They also have a, if you go to SteinHome.com, you can register and you can do a giveaway for $5,000 in appliances. You can register through November 25th. Uh, they've just got every kind of special you can imagine, but not just that. They got uh, floors on sale right now, waterproof flooring on sale right now, the power equipment on sale right now, and the biggest appliance, Black Friday appliance sale you've ever seen. And there are deals on top of deals on top of deals, and only at Stein. Steinhome.com. Check out the brochure. You're going to be glad you did. Washers, dryers, all kind of styles and names, microwaves, gas stop, uh, stoves, electric, freezers, everything right now going on. Steinhome.com. Check them out. Go by, and you'll be glad you did. By the way, a little later in the program, Scott Wilfong, Blake Miguez is going to join us as well, uh, talking a little bit about the amendment number two. We'll get some other insight from Miguez as we rock and roll. All right. We're going to take a break. Be right back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. We have it. We're going to play it, but I, I got a, a guess I'm going to do this segment in, and then Mark Levin, you don't want to miss it on uh, them calling President Trump Stalin and Hitler and all that. This is a You don't want to miss this. Matter of fact, Brandon, we may send this to Jennifer as well to post on Facebook. All right, before we jump, we're going to jump gears, though. Secretary of State's race right around the corner, and there's no doubt in my mind there will be a runoff. The young lady joining me is the mayor of Turkey Creek, Miss Heather Cloud. Heather, how you doing? Hello again, Moon. Hey. I'm great. How are you? Doing great. It's great to hear from you. All right, Heather, you you've been traveling the state, girl. Tell me tell me what's going on. Uh, what do you think about the campaign so far? Uh, really, it's down to the people have already voted. Some have, and but there's still a big vote on Tuesday. Just talk a little bit about that, and we'll find out what you want to do when you get in that place as well. Sure. Well, um, we have had such a groundswell, really a grassroots campaign, and have just picked up support from across the state, support in places that I didn't even realize that uh, we would or, or expect to pick up. And uh, people are just um, understanding the gravity of the message that I'm speaking. And the, the most interesting thing is, you know, I'm a Republican, and I'm a, I'm a conservative uh, Republican, but I'm picking up support from from just um, all parties, and that's pretty fascinating. That they're uh, you know they're crossing party lines and supporting me because there's just a lot of people that are sick of this good old boy um, practice, this corruption that's rooted in Louisiana politics, and they want everyone wants it to stop. Oh, no doubt about it. And I would I would think you would probably get that that feeling. But you know, you had not been one of some some people have spent a lot of money in the race. And uh, it's not that you spent a lot of money or didn't spend a lot of money, but you, you, when you say grassroots, you're talking about people just on the ground, and, and I think that's that's an advantage for you in a way. That's been good for you. It has been. So much word of mouth. Um, and I have the largest, largest by far uh, social media campaign. Um, it's really, I would say, maybe revolutionary for the state. Um, I am, you know, an avid social media user because out in the rural area where I'm mayor, we, we don't, our people don't um, watch TV and listen to the radio as much as maybe in Lafayette and, um, and Alexandria and so forth. And so, uh, so often they're looking at my social media to get uh, public service updates and, you know, reports that, that they're needing for um, the water system and events and so forth. So I've just grown that. And then we just built upon that uh, network that I already had, and we built it across the state, and it's, it has been wonderful. But what I want to say is this has been one of the greatest experiences of my life, running a statewide race. Um, it is an honor and a privilege to be able to do this. And, and even um, with my running uh, mates, my opponents, it has been somewhat um, peaceful. It hasn't been severely contentious. There's been a few issues, but... Um, we've we've all pretty much maintained integrity through this process, and uh, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate the fact that everybody has been um, kind. 
for the most part yeah. to one another. Yeah, it, it, it is a it, it is amazing. Uh, I think this race has kind of got lost a little bit too on on. You know, in the fact that, you know, we got the congressional races, everybody's focusing on really congressional races outside the state. And so it's mm-hmm. uh, it's 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 a little disheartening for me because I want people to really understand what this race is all about. If you are to win, what do you feel like you, you're you going to bring and what, what do you want to see change? And I, and I want to mention to people you have fought voter fraud. You did win. And, and I think that's important. So. Just tell me, what do you think, as far as what you're gonna want to what you're gonna want to do? Well, and I, I mean, no disrespect um, to Kyle Ardwin, our interim Secretary of State, whatsoever. Um, if he would happen to take this office, I do, however, expect him to take action. There is no sense that we have three thousand nine hundred and ten precincts across this state, and currently we have four investigators for. Um, illegal electioneering. That, that is absolutely senseless. I, I can't run um, my water system. I can't run my businesses like that, much less the elections division for the state of Louisiana. So um, we, need a, we need a buck up. Whoever the next Secretary of State is needs to get that, uh, get that right immediately. That is senseless. I know that um, $23,000 was sent sending out letters to um, individuals that get paper ballots telling them that their votes are going to be protected. But golly gee, you know, we have 3,910 precincts. We've got to, we've got to protect that election process on the ground. So that's going to be something that I do day one. When I, when I called for an investigation, there were two investigators for the state of Louisiana. I mean, I would think that anyone listening to this program has an, enough sense to understand that that is senseless. Period. So I will definitely take that on immediately. Um, and, and something else that needs to be done is better communication between um, elected officials that are on the ground. I, as mayor, have never been contacted by the Secretary of State's office to help reconcile the voter rules. Um, and that, who better, who better than to help reconcile these rules than elected officials on the ground that know their constituency? So there's there's so much potential that hasn't been tapped into to help um, facilitate a more dignified process. Yeah, it's a. Uh, is there anything from the uh, law side that you think you have to go to the legislature? And I know you're not in there yet. And some people can say yeah. what they're going to do when they get in there to go, "Holy cow, we need to do this. We need to do that," because it would be new. So, is there anything you can think of from a law perspective you would have to go in? Uh, and, and get legislators maybe to pass a bill to help you out any? Yes. Well, Moon, you do uh, You do know, and I'm, I'm hoping your listeners know, that I've spent the last four years working on voter fraud legislation. Um, particularly, I've, we've passed a bill um, to beef up the uh, penalties for elections, uh, election, um, illegal election acts. We've beefed up penalties to... Um, provide for more consequences for those that um, violate the rights of mentally handicapped people. Uh-huh. And that, that needs to be a continued process. There needs to be more penalties, more fines. And for that matter, there should the court shouldn't get to decide whether or not it's a felony act if you buy votes and illegally, illegally engineer an election. It should be a mandatory felony. Um, that is That is a violation of one of our most sacred rights. Yeah, when you buy, and when so, they out there, when they out there voting, buying, or cheating, I think we ought to throw the book at them. I mean, yeah. throw the book at them hard with a lot of time in jail because that's why nobody ever does anything. We slap them on the wrist, so we we find them. But you really, if you put somebody in jail for ten years for voter fraud, I tell you what, you you'd get the eyes of you get you the eyes of a lot of people. That's right. One of the the best the best bills that I worked on to get passed, which what it was, I wrote the I wrote the key points. And Mike Johnson, um, he's a congressman now. He was a legislator from Bossier at the time. He would put the, them in legal jargon, and I would go testify, and we'd get them passed. One of the I think the most paramount bills that we passed was um, if you do if you are convicted of buying an election, um, that you could have to pay. 
for the cost of the new election. And so that's, in Lafayette, that's $100,000. So we've got to set up roadblocks, deterrence, and a zero tolerance, and we will do that legislatively. Um, I I will work hard. I've I've got legislative friends across the state, and I'm going to work hard with them to get those laws passed to beef up our election system because – because that that is an issue. Jurisprudence, bad jurisprudence, bad case law has diluted the effectiveness of the Louisiana election system. Yeah, I so, noticed. Uh, I noticed. You know, I noticed one of the candidates, and I'm not going to mention uh, Julie Stokes's name, that wants automatic <laughs> voter registration. And I like to fell out. I don't even know how many leftists want automatic voter registration. You turn 18, you automatically registered. That that means a person has no responsibility. They don't have to go sign up to vote. They don't even have to care. They're on a voter roll. I mean, that that to me looks crazy. That's my opinion. Your opinion. Sure. I mean, we we see these these caravans trying to make one. I mean, that's going to be the first thing that you know liberals do is, is get those people signed up to vote. You know, and how easy get them registered on the same day and they vote and then to, you know choose leaderships for towns, choose lawmakers for states, and choose um, congressional leadership it's just ridiculous and senseless and i mean how far have we even to consider that how far have we gone my goodness um but i do want to tell you also you now i talk about fraud um in elections and and that's going to be you know that is the heart the forefront of my campaign and also voter apathy i realize you know i'm raising kids up my gosh I'm, we've got to we've got to make this thing last and it's going to take active participants to keep this this wonderful thing going uh called the united states of america and so we've got to get grow kids cultivate the next generation of voters and that is something that i bring special to the table being a louisiana educator so i haven't been in the classroom in quite some time um that's still you know i was i'm from a family of educators and so bringing education um back in yep. the election process is just that's going to make a big difference education is key right knowledge is power all right heather look i don't have any time left i'll give you just a few more seconds what do you what do you tell the voters real quick well, you know, if you want the same old, keep electing the same old. If you want somebody that's going to have a zero tolerance for election fraud and hijacking your most sacred blood-bought freedom, the freedom to vote, then that's me. So if you want different, if you want change, then I am the face and the voice of change. Yeah. All right, Heather, God bless. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you later. Take care. All right, bye-bye. All right, let's take a break. More to come. When we get back, Mark Levin, Brandon, don't let me forget. We're going to play it. You don't want to miss it. Hi, hello. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has that hotline as we rock and roll. All right. Two guests, Scott Wilfong and uh, Representative Blake Miguez are here. Guys, how y'all doing? Doing well, Moon. I hadn't seen you in a little while. I know you've been on cruises and vacations. i got one question <laughs> for you. And you got to be honest You've with been me. All over the damn world, and you go fuss at me like that. I got, I got one question for and your you. Dad's right here. He's about to go ahead, right? Go ahead. Ben, be honest with me here. How many buffet meals have you eaten since I've last seen you? Not many. I don't yeah. eat buffet. Me and my wife are not buffet. <laughs> I mean, I'm now on the flip side, when I went to Alaska, we liked the lunch, so we grabbed some. Maybe a better question. Everything was buffet. How many boudin links? I can't count that. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been better to ask how much how much hog crackers I ate because Brandon laughs yeah, when he sees me go get hog crackers. He goes get a bottle of water. Then you go cough. You go hack. He'll eat so much he'll cough and hack on the air. <laughs> Scott, are you with us? I'm here, Moon. Good, good to talk to you and Blake. And uh, I don't eat all the Cajun stuff like that. So I'm just a crackling fan. So that's that's the extent of my. My Cajun well, if you were at this radio station, you saw all the food they brought up you half the time. Scott, you would enjoy yourself. All right, guys. Uh, amendment number two. I can't, I, I, I got to remember, it's amendment number two, not the Second Amendment, Blake. I know you, that, you Blake right. thought he was talking about the Second Amendment. That's why he came running today. <laughs> but, uh, st- Scott, I'll start with you on amendment number two. And, uh, which, why are you supporting this amendment? Well, it's something that, uh, just, uh, you know, as a libertarian and, uh, a conservative, I've just always felt like the, you know, the government should have a high burden when it comes to, uh, especially taking away rights, things that a jury can do. And, you know, it's always bothered me a little bit over the years that we were really the only state in the country other than Oregon, I guess, that uh, that allows this 10-2 conviction. And, um, you know, when I started talking with other Republicans and other conservatives, most of them kind of felt like I did. And yeah. uh, I just decided to get my PAC involved, which is a judiciary PAC, and talk to Blake, and he's been fantastic and helped us shoot a 
a commercial on it and uh, has been a big big advocate for it. And I know he voted for it in the House, so uh, just glad to be working with him. Representative Miguez, I know that uh, you supported him. I heard the commercial ads, and I knew you and Scott, and I knew you all teamed up. But uh, my big question to you is uh, it looks like this thing's going to roll through. Uh, you, you, you've been in politics a while. you got to have an organization to for something or against something to make it happen. There's not a lot of people against this, at least organized. But in your case, I mean, I mean, you, you're big time for this, too. I mean, you helped vote it well, on the deal. Well, th- this is one of the situations where you can be proud of in the legislature. As you know, I haven't been proud of a lot of the things that come out of the, the Baton Rouge lately in the matter of raising taxes and some other fiscal policy. But you look down and you try to find successes, and this is one of those areas where we've had some success on a bipartisan issue. Yep. You've got bipartisan support. Um, oh, at this point, there's a lot of left Democrats it's left both, and both sides. Yeah, as you know, I'm a um, I'm a staunch conservative, but there's members on the opposite side of the aisle for me that are supporting this, and the reason that we're supporting it is because it's the right thing to do. It's you know, like Scott Peter, mentioned. There's something with you to do. Something about you with Second Amendment yeah. or Amendment Two. You know what I'm saying? I like to know anything to do with two you like. Well, <laughs> and, and I'm glad you bring up the Second Amendment, Moon, because as you saw, you probably saw my video where I'm shooting firearms. As everyone knows, I'm a competitive yep. handgun shooter. The Second Amendment is very important to me, as as well as a lot of the other amendments that were created in the Bill of Rights. But we can't take any chances when you're talking about taking constitutional rights away. And when you convict someone, you're you're depriving them of life and liberty. And when you do that, you want to make sure that we're 100 percent certain. And, you know, as a conservative, we maintain a healthy level of skepticism in government intrusion on our constitutional rights. And, you know, if you if you look back to our, some of our founders and well, some I'll, I'll bring up someone else, you know, um, I hold to a high standard and um, Justice Scalia. Okay. And he brought up he talked about how our constitutional rights, they're so important that the state should have to endure the minor inconvenience of proving their case by unanimous decision. Because he felt that those individual liberties and the individual rights, in my particular case, the First and the Second Amendment that are, that are so important to me, are also very important to your listeners out there. And when you're going to deprive someone of that, you should be 100% certain. And the only way you can be certain is with unanimous jury. And I think most of you know, I went back in my district and I talked to a lot of my voters and supporters, and they were, said, Blake, I thought we already had a unanimous decision. I said, guys, no, that's in 48 other states, and that's on the federal system. But here in Louisiana, we, we're unique because in non-capital cases, you can yeah. be, you can, you can be. I mean, Louisiana is the only state where someone can be sentenced to life without parole, without a unanimous decision of the jury. That's a good point. And Moon, I, and I'll, I'll quote one of my uh, colleagues from the other side uh, on, in the upper chamber in the Senate. And then this is straight. I'm reading this straight from the paper. He said, "Is 10 out of 12 good enough for your children? Is it good enough for your wife?" Is it good enough for your neighbor? And that comes from Senator Dan Clater, who's from um, Mr. Wilfong's area in Baton Rouge. You got to think about that. If yes. if it's your family member, yeah. do you want to take that chance? If I want to know that I'm uh, getting a unanimous point. decision, you just you got you got. This. There are some people, Scott, that are against this. They're concerned about getting anybody convicted anymore because you could have a, a, a friend or something like that. Just your thoughts on that. Well, that's why, you know, I've had to correct some people um, recently about, you know, they, they, they throw out the term jury nullification. Yeah. You know, a, a, a non-unanimous verdict is not a nullification. That's a mistrial. And it doesn't set the criminal free. It just puts the burden back on the, on the justice system to, to retry the case, to, to either get more evidence, pick a different jury, whatever. We're not, it, it's not something I think we have to worry about criminals running free um, if this passes, which I think it will. But when I decided to do this, that's why I, I looked in the legislature. My idea was to talk to conservatives uh, about and equate this issue with gun rights. Mm-hmm. It's something that, that, we, that gun owners and NRA members understand implicitly, that the government's the one that can take those rights away. And so that's why Blake was the first one I approached from the legislature about this. And I said, you know, we can frame this message so the conservatives will understand it. And, uh, and I well, think that's, I, I just think it's that's a, been I, the case. I, I think it's amazing. I've seen family groups come out for it. I've seen staunch Republicans mm-hmm. and conservatives come out for it. I've seen liberal, I've seen trial lawyers come out for it. I mean, everybody's come out with you again. This is about the only issue that I can remember where you've got Christian groups and the ACLU coming On together for group. this. And that, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Right? George Soros, the forum. Koch brothers, uh, the Louisiana <laughs> Family yeah. Forum. They, they, come in and, they come in and having a party. Uh. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, that'd be a hell of a party, by the way. But, but like I said before, Moon, this is something you can be proud of, that everyone is working across party lines. We're finding something that we can agree upon. There's been a lot of disagreement in Baton Rouge lately. This is an issue we can agree upon. 
And as a conservative, this is an issue we can do to protect our constitutional rights, our life, our just, liberty. Just, just promise me one thing, and I think Scott's going to agree with me. There's no tax wrapped in this. I mean, no. It came, it came out I, of that I, Well, I, 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 Moon, you know me well enough. I'm, I'm against all tax, all unnecessary tax increases. I know, but I, it came and out it, of bad Ruth, And, and, and this thing had a tax increase in it, I'd be definitely against it. I, but that's not I, the I, case. I hear yeah. Scott laughing. Scott, you know that's all it did, $7 billion worth of taxes. So that's why I had to ask the question. Oh, I know, I know, absolutely. These, these, uh, and see, that worries me, Blake. Over there. That, that worries me because <laughs> Bell Edwards is going to find a way to put something with the number two on it and second <laughs> on it, and he's going to fool Blake on the tax increase. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh, look, man. I just, I, but anyway, I, this is amendment. Guys, I want to say it again. This is a, a amendment number two. It's That's on right. the ballot. There's six of them. So That's you right. got to know which one you're voting for. And y'all saying voting for, I think it's for and against. Yes. Uh, it's not yes and no. Yeah. I, I thought it was for and against. Am I correct? Yeah, it's do you favor. The question, yeah. the question is do you favor okay. an okay. amendment? Well, it's either for or yes, yeah, whatever's and, on the ballot. And today we're advocating for or yes on uh, constitu- constitutional amendment number two. Well, I've always said to, to pass anything, you got to have an organized uh, either an opposition or somebody that's for it. If you don't have that, you have problems. Now, in this particular case, I just hadn't come across many. There are a few that think this is not a good deal. Well, and Moon, I do want to mention, just for the record, the state Republican Party, of which I'm an elected member, came out on record for this. So it's not just okay. groups like my PAC and, and, and specialty groups. It is the state Republican Party is actually backing this. Did the Democrats so, back you know, it as well? Didn't they back it as well? Or they, they didn't make a statement? I, I believe they did vote to back it. I, I could be wrong. But, oh, so uh, finally, I think, I think both finally some Democrats following Republicans. You don't see that much. <laughs> <laughs> We're only taking the lead. They yeah, and by it. the way, they didn't have to change parties to do this. I want to let everybody know. Well, I, uh, probably, if, if, if Donald Trump came out for this, they'd probably well, change their mind. If Donald Trump came out with this tomorrow, boy, I'll tell you what, CNN and the rest of it would be down there. All right, guys. Scott, you get the last word, man. Well, I just want to uh, just ask all our conservative folks around the state that are listening, make sure you get out on Tuesday and vote and tell your friends why this is important and why this is a conservative idea and and it's going to make Louisiana better uh, once it's in place. Scott Wilfong, thank you so much. Representative Blake Miguez, thank Thank you so much. All right, when we get back, quick run over with Mr. Dean. He brought something to eat again. I saw Brandon eating already. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Why would yeah. I not use the give, head start? Give something to Blake. He hadn't had Louisiana food in two months. <laughs> <laughs> He's been all over the world. Anyway, we'll take a break. Be right back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Our good friend, Mr. Dean Adinos, the man who started it all. I'm so glad your son's gone. By the way, he, I, mean, I was laughing with Brandon a while ago. Tim. Tim did all these hunting excursions. And so we, so we saw him send something out a while ago. He's in New York with his wife. Mm-hmm. Now I know why he got to go hunting for fish. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you that, Moon. That's no. exactly he payoff went, time. He, he went 18 days, and he went 10 days. And then all of a sudden, we get stuff, and Brandon goes, yeah, he's in New York. I said, well, of course he's in New York. His wife let him go hunting for a month. She's going to New York and have some fun. And guess what? Whether he wanted to go or not, he's going. Am I right? Oh, that's right. You're right. He had no choice about that. By Shopping and, and whatever they're doing. Absolutely. Anyway, Mr. Dean Dino always sticks in it Friday. All right. We always talk about the variety. You're a great pizza place. But, man, y'all have a little bit of everything. What did you bring today? So today I brought some chicken and sausage gumbo and cheese bread. Well, the uh, cheese bread you brought is gone because we happen to have some extra people in here and they ate it. <laughs> yeah, if you'd have called me, I'd tell you when to bring some and hide some. You know, sometimes you didn't leave in the truck, no, I'll go I, get I, I should have called earlier and said, if you need extra, I would have brought Blake some. Blake Miguez ate so much, his, his beard didn't turn. It looked kind of a bready color right now. <laughs> but uh, chicken and sausage gumbo is just one of the many things y'all do. Because really, when I talk about Dino's, people might say, well, pizza place. No. It is a pizza place. Yes. It's also a place for gumbo, and it's also a place for great salads salad and other and great pasta that's dishes. That's right, pasta dishes and what have you. We, we branched out to make it more than uh, just the original. When, when I first started, it was just pizza. Yeah, but you know, you do like everybody else. If you got a business and you want it to grow, you got to kind of change exactly. with the times. And yeah. people yeah. like to be able to go in and say, I'm going to eat pizza. But if you got three people in your group that don't want to eat pizza because they ate there yesterday, they can still go there and find a great meal. That's right. That's I, right. You got to, to stay in business. You have to diversify and, and just add on. Keep well, I add this. I like the cheeseburger salad that you have because. But the other day I went in and they said, "Would you, would you like? Would you like to have turkey instead?" Well, I kind of laugh at all these people that don't eat the real meat. I said, "You know what? That sounds good. That was actually really good." 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking beef, man. You know, I, well, I'm thinking turkey. I, I, I'm like you. I, I don't think of the birds too much. I, I pretty well like that. I like the, Would you like some imitation turkey, or imitation crab? No, I want the real thing. Mm-hmm. And it's the real thing there. Well, that's right. That's right. That's juicy, it. juicy. I really enjoy and, it. And on our, uh, you know, like our Marie Laveau pizza, that's the real crab. You know, still my favorite. We're buying. Still my favorite pizza is the Marie Laveau. And if, 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 if Loverboy is still playing in New York at the ballet, bring me a, a Maria Laveau. <laughs> I shall do that. I, I, I'm like you. That's my favorite. I'll have Brandon send him a note. I hope he's enjoying the ballet. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dean, okay. always a pleasure. Two pleasure great locations, folks. Third one coming to Karen Crow. Okay. I'll let you go. Thank you. All right. I'm, I'm and, and I will. Uh, sir? I'll bring you next time. No, bring sir. No problem at all. You notice I'm doing special orders right now. Yeah. All righty. Uh, by the way, I do want to mention before we go back to Blake a few quick questions. We don't have much time left. Virginia Pot Fontenot of, uh, I think it was Lake Charles, Louisiana, is our Cane River Pecan giveaway winner. So we did pick that, and we want to let everybody know we've gotten hundreds and hundreds of people to go. All right, Blake, uh, Secretary of State's race. I'm not asking you to make a prediction on it because I don't even think that's fair because you, you, you think there's several good candidates in here, don't you? Yeah, there's, there's several good candidates in the race. Uh, there's one I'd probably stay away from, maybe two or three as well. <laughs> Well, I've, I've I've mentioned at least one every day. Yeah, um, the Secretary of State's race is going to be interesting because, you know, it's not a race I think that a whole lot of people have been interested in this entire time. There's some other congressional races going on. I think it's one of those races where I think at the last minute you're going to ask your friend, hey, who are you voting for for Secretary of State? And, um, you know, what you've seen at the very end of the race, um, the, the last in the media markets will determine sort of your decision. But I would recommend everyone to go out and really look at those candidates, spend some time. There's, it um, becomes there's, important because that person has to turn around and run next year, too. So if somebody gets exactly. in we don't like, <coughs> we don't like, then we got we get to vote again next year. I would encourage um, the, the listeners out there, you know, find out who the conservative candidates are. There's a, there's a few conservatives in there that have a proven conservative record. And then stay away from those that aren't that conservative. There's some that are flying that Republican flag that, you know, we hear the words rhino, that have, that have sided with the governor, that have tried to increase your taxes, and have done everything that us as conservatives stand against, and that's the last by thing the way, we need a Secretary of by State. By the way, and, and she, I'm saying this, beat up on Republicans. That, that was so frustrating to watch them beat up on conservatives. Because yeah. they already got some Republicans that literally beat up on conservatives. Unless you're Rob Shadow, who, by the way, dude, did I tell you, he hates raising taxes. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, voting record doesn't show. But he, he said, you know what, I, like, might, I, I think, like taxes so much he took a job in government. Rob, Rob's a nice guy. I think he voted for all the taxes, and I voted against them, so we can't solve each other's vote every time. We actually sit across the aisle from each other. Yeah, by the way, that was real funny. I looked up A.G. Edwards. Is, I mean, A.G. A.G. Oh. Crow is running the spot, and the whole half the spot is pounding on Julie Stokes voting for billions of dollars worth of taxes. So I just think it's interesting, and I'm glad some of these people did some of this. No, By the yeah. way, not you, but they, I think it's amazing. Yeah, Julie, Julie and I, uh, she, she's a nice lady, and I know she's gone through some challenges, and, and I'm, we all prayed for her. I'm glad to see that she's got over some of those sure, the sure, medical conditions absolutely. she had. When we got to the legislature, we looked at some of the tax issues. We disagreed on a lot. Um, one of the big um, issues that I had is whenever she brought up um, the idea of making where we could have a fiscal session every year. I think, you know, I think the legislature, every time the legislature is in Baton Rouge. A fiscal you, year every year to raise taxes you know, there, every year? Yeah, I was against that. I said, you know, it's right now it's in the oddball years you can raise taxes. And we get a, we get too many taxes raised on the hardworking taxpayers of Louisiana already. The last thing we need, need to do is give politicians the opportunity to twice as many times um, every two years to start raising taxes. And we were fortunate enough we killed that piece of legislation in the House, and we've killed other bad ideas she's had. Um, nice lady, but um, she's she, her her tax that, policy is a little different. The other thing too is she was bragging as a lifelong Republican. She was a Democrat for ten years. That's a fact. De- Democrat for ten. And come on, man, you got to be. But I was surprised. I just saw A.G. Crow for the first time up and running, and the first thing he did was go after Stokes and her record. But, but these, these are the kind of this. This is why my the voters in my district elected me. We have these kind of debates. You know, we we sit across the table from each other, and they're all great individuals, very exceptional individuals up there in Baton Rouge. But they have different philosophies, and you know, my philosophy is different than her in particular. And we and we have these these debates, and that's part of the political process. By the way, when this is all over, this this next week or next month, because we have a runoff probably, it all starts in the governor's race. It's going to be an interesting year. Next well, year. I can tell you who not to vote for for governor. <laughs> It, you know, the Louisiana, the Louisiana economy, you know, the nation's economy is doing so well, 4.5% GDP. But I just, it just, I, I, you know, I go in my district, I see all the people that want to go to work. I see all the great tourism industry we have, all the, the oil and gas infrastructure. And yet we're one third worst performing economy in the nation. 
and that's directly related to some of the policies on the fourth floor. When I say the fourth floor, it's the, it's the governor. You know, we need a new governor in Louisiana because Louisiana needs to be open for business again, open for investment. Absolutely. You know, our main priority in Louisiana should not be suing people that have invested in this state, have been good corporate, um, you know, stewards of our economy. It should be to figure out how to get, make more businesses invest here, how to, how to stimulate small business, because at the end of the day, that puts my constituents to work. And if my constituents go to work, and they can feed their families, then they can pay those taxes to government. But stop raising taxes on my constituents and stop sending all the jobs to other states. We, we can't. We we need prosperity in Louisiana. By the way, quit suing companies too. Exactly. That that's what that hurts us a lot. And I and the and the other thing, Moon, for quick is we have the second highest auto insurance rates in the nation. There's a reason for that. You know, we need to look at changing some of our policies so that you can afford no auto insurance. No doubt. Blake Miguez, Representative Miguez. All right, we'll do it again. I'm sure we'll see you a lot next year. <laughs> thank you so <laughs> much. I hope you have a great weekend, Moon. Right, folks, and thank God you to all the listeners see out there. See you on Monday, down to four days to the election. Thank God that's going to be over. That and the LSU-Alabama football game. Over. Ready for both of those to be over with. <laughs> all right.